Um, this is another view here. Um, just different views here. Here's 27.8, you know, in on the northern coast of Spain. And then uh, very hot temperatures down here. Mediterranean, of course, here. You know, here's here we go. Very, very warm temperatures in these regions. Okay, and this is done for... Um, for for you know February first, second, third, etc. Okay, so extremely uh, warm temperatures, and again the topography is here. Now here's another article. Uh, this one is in the Washington Post. The warmth is really unheard of. Much of Eastern Europe, including Helsinki and Moscow, saw the warmest January on record. Okay, so even early February is even warmer, but the whole of January was, was very, very warm. So this is a temperature anomaly in degrees Fahrenheit, and the scales down here up to 14 and a half degrees here. You know, anything red is, you know, five to nine degrees or so. So you can see this is averaged, um, well, this is February 3rd, um, year-to-date average temperature anomaly. Okay, this is, this is when the data was, so, so far over the year, 20, um, so far over 2020, so all of January for a few days of February, this is the anomaly over Europe. And you can just see incredibly warm temperatures, not so much for Spain here, Spain's getting it now in, in uh, February. Okay, um, but uh, some of these temperature anomalies are enormous on average. Many areas are seeing temperatures average 10 to 15 degrees Fahrenheit above normal, which is between 5.5 to 8.3 Celsius since January 1st. Moscow temperatures have averaged 13.3 Fahrenheit, which is 7.4 Celsius above normal. Helsinki made it above freezing every day in January. This is bizarre. Its average January high is only minus 1.1 Celsius. Um, with typical lows of minus 6.7 Celsius. And, you know, it's made it above, um, this is the highs, okay? Uh, it's made it, uh, you know, it's just un un incredible. So here's an image of the January monthly temperature. Um, this is the temperature, the fluctuation, and here we are in 2020, you know, off, off the chart, okay? Um, off the chart. Lack of snow and the warmth is really unheard of. Um, you know, the records were just blown away. So for the first time on record, we had January when Oslo, so Oslo, Norway, Stockholm, Sweden, and Helsinki, Finland, Copenhagen, Denmark, they were above freezing every day of the month. All but Oslo was totally snow free. It snowed in early January in Oslo. They got an inch or something and that was it or a few centimeters, I believe. So here we go. Oslo, Copenhagen, Stockholm, Helsinki. Unbelievable. Um, all well, all above freezing every day of the month for the European winter. Um, Oslo got an inch of snow, a little more than an inch of snow on the first day of January, and that's it. It would have been snow-free. Like in Helsinki, for example, 1st January without snow on record, and records go back to 1845. Right? Th this type of warmth and lack of snow is unprecedented. It's never been experienced before by people in Finland. Unprecedented month on many scales. So, uh, you know, Oslo, not one day below zero, not one snowflake the entire month. No one can remember a January in Oslo like this, first time ever. You know, and the Swedish ski industry is suffering. Not only is the existing snow melted, but they, the artificial snow that they're making at night, it's just, you know, it's, the nighttime lows aren't even going much below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, which is zero Celsius. So you can't even make artificial snow. Cherry trees in Sweden have bloomed early, opening their buds to reveal spring-like flowers in the heart of winter. Okay, um... You know, Moscow, warmest January on record. Um, and uh, here's Moscow, the 
daily average and normal temperatures. Here's the anomaly, temperature departures, the average 7.41 degrees Celsius departure, going up to almost uh, 10 or 11 degrees uh, Celsius above, above normal. You know, but when they say what's to blame for it, they don't talk too much. Well, they say, I think it has been, this is, these are weather people, so there's, they're going to talk about the North Atlantic and Arctic Oscillation Indexes. And they're saying that's the dominant reason, but we know that, you know, but at least they acknowledge climate change has contributed to the warmth. Well, we know, you know, climate change, warming Arctic, wave, you know, lower temperature difference to the equator, wavy jet streams stalling out, um, you know, lots, and, and uh, you know, basically, you know, it's in the jet stream changes, and of course, so the, you know, the weather's changing around the planet. Um, and they talk about the North Atlantic Oscillation Index being positive here, and so on. But uh, so let's get more into that, into these indices, from this article. So this is winter breaking point, North Atlantic. This is again uh, severe weather Europe. Um, winter breaking point. The NAO, North Atlantic Oscillation, and the Arctic Oscillation, they're both in near record values, and that affects both sides of the Atlantic. One gets spring, one gets cold. Which side are you on? So this is Europe, of course. February is the last official winter month in Europe. Um, and this is, I showed you this video already showing the progression of, you know, the, it's warm, super record warm temperatures over Europe. And then that's replaced by, I mean, these are the anomalies plus eight to minus eight, and then the purple comes down and sweeps through. So all those cherry blossoms and stuff that are out, of course, so those buds are destroyed in the in the record cold, you know, the the cold, the very cold temperatures with minus eight degrees Celsius anomalies over normal that will destroy those. So, um, so what are these in indices? Everything oscillates. We usually hear a lot about these oscillations every winter. So one is AO, the Arctic Oscillation. This is the North Atlantic Oscillation. And then there's quasi-biennial oscillation, Pacific North American Oscillation, East Pacific Oscillation, West Pacific Oscillation. You've probably seen this one, El Nino Southern Oscillation, and the SOI Southern Oscillation Index pertaining to uh, the circulation patterns, air, wind circulation patterns around Antarctica. So what are these oscillations in reality and why are they important? Well, oscillation just means something moving back and forth, you know, up and down, think of a sine wave, um, you know, for a certain weather parameter, it could be atmospheric pressure, temperature, sea surface temperature, direction of wind. So the most famous is the Arctic Oscillation or AO. And that's to do with the rise and fall of pressure in the Arctic region. So if you just look at the state of the AO, it's an index, um, just like the index is used in the stock market in Wall Street. Okay, um, it's a quick first assessment of the circulation state. So, you know, an AO being, say, negative five or five, we know right away roughly what the, the um, weather circulation pattern will look like. Um, and you can do forecasts, of course, for these oscillations, a 10-day forecast, if it's plus four to plus six, we know what to expect. So it's calculated from pressure. The lower the pressure over the Arctic region, the higher, the po more positive the AO index gets. There's low pressure in the Arctic region, that's deep cold cyclones, and a stronger jet stream, so a stronger polar vortex. Okay, and if it's the, the AO is uh, high, if, high, if there's high pressure over the Arctic region, the jet stream's weaker, the, the jet is much wavier, and it's easier for cold to get out of the Arctic region and for warm air to go up into the Arctic and the ridges of the jet stream. So this is the two phases of the, the AO. This is Arctic Oscillation positive, so strong uh, jet stream, strong polar vortex, the cold is confined up into the Arctic, and the jet stream is generally zonal moving uh, west to east and the storms track you know over over northern Europe and in the negative phase uh, the jet streams are much much slower the cold air can spill down much further the warm air can go up much much farther north okay and if we go to weather Willie's site this is another 
view. So this is the Arctic Oscillation. The negative phase, the cold air spills south, the jet stream's weaker, wavier. So you get cold, you get troughs, cold air, cold dry air coming down in the trough, warm, hot, warm, uh, warm, humid air going north in the ridges, and you get this sort of thing here. Now in the AO positive phase, um, this is over Europe. Now flip the earth around. This is what you get in the positive phase. Instead of being wavy like this, the jet stream is, is, is more zonal. It's less meridional in the north-south direction. So it goes like this, okay? Um, and uh, you can look at some of the, you can track the index over time and see what happened here. This is just an example. And then the certain index, so the AO negative, it means that the, um, the, the, this is the uh, 500 hexapascals, so about halfway up in the atmosphere, the geopotential height, so the pressure. So this is higher pressure, this is lower pressure. Um, so you can see, you can correlate, you know, that, follow that to the temperatures and, and you can get, so, so the index can basically be one number that kind of gives you a feel for this map. That's the idea of the index. Now, there's also, um, you can look at correlations between the index and temperatures uh, in the Arctic and you can see um, you know, you can follow, uh, you know, how well an index describes what happens in the system. Now, this is the AO index, so it's going very positive, okay? So we get a very, very warm Europe, and the seven-day forecast is for it to, to, go, um, to go up positive, and 10-day forecast, and 14-day forecast. So positive AO, so, you know, Europe is, is quite warm, but then the jet stream comes back down. Now, the North Atlantic Oscillation is another index. It's the difference in pressure between the Icelandic low and the Azores high, okay? So it's correlated to the, connected to the AO, but it's calculated differently. And you can see what's going on. Uh, you know, there's correlations I'm not gonna talk about, but the index is going positive here. So let's have a look here at the North Atlantic Oscillation. So in winter time, this is a negative mode. Okay, so the pressure is, is uh, you know, it's low pressure. There's a weak low near Iceland. There's a weak high over the Azores. So the jet stream becomes extremely wavy like this. And Europe, for example, is cold and dry. So that's NaO negative in the winter and NaO positive in the winter. The low is stronger, the low pressure is stronger. Icelandic low, the famous Icelandic low, a, a quasi-permanent mode in the winter time, often. And uh, quasi, meaning not always, but sometimes. And then you have the, um, the high is also stronger. So the jet stream, the con temperature contrast here is larger than it is here, so the jet stream sails by this way and it brings warm because it's coming here warm areas here it's bringing warm and wet weather over to Europe in in the winter time and this is the NAO strength relative to and so but it's not coming current so we won't worry about that okay so so this is the NAO and then there's also the PNA index and there's correlation. So there's all of these index. So PNA negative, NAO positive. This is West Pacific Ocean index switching and East Pacific Ocean switching. Okay, so there's all of these index and they can basically, you know, one index can sort of cover what's going on in the, in the uh, maps there. Um, and uh, yeah, so, you know, climate reality, you can look at the or climate reanalyzer, you can you can just click Google climate reanalyzer and look at the patterns, and also uh, you know you can look at what the jet stream is is doing server down right now. So if we go to Earth Null School, of course, why is this happening to me right now? There we go. Okay, uh, so this is now, and you can see the pattern over Europe, and we can flip through. Uh, and see what's going on. You can relate that to what I've already spoken about. 
Okay, thanks for listening.